Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Jummah al Wida, Jummah al Yatima, the Jummah of the farewell of Ramadan. That this Friday will be the last Friday of Ramadan. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from all its realities and the angel of Ramadan to dress us and bless us from all its realities. And that uh, Laylatul Eid, the night before the Eid, if Eid is on Sunday that would be Saturday night, if they announce Eid on Saturday that would be Friday night. That night of Eid is the most important night of Ramadan, that's in which Allah will give the blessings and ni'mat what they call payday. 30 days of struggling and working in the way of Allah and Allah gives His pay on the last day to give every ni'mat and every blessing and every dressing so that to be dressed by it. And we pray that shaitan doesn't deceive us and take us away from that and send us into bazaars and unnecessary places. Alhamdulillah with whatever's happening on this earth Allah has everybody confined to a particular space. But that night is a night in which to be in zikr, to be in your salah, in your du'as and every type of worshipness that, Ya Rabbi if I did anything wrong forgive me, if I did any imperfections forgive me. We have uh, tonight this before the Jummah is Salatul Kafarat al dunub and we sent out the post for that, the admins can post it online for anyone who's watching online. Again that's a immense blessings that uh, I'll just read, I'm not good at reading. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as Salam said that this was a sunnah prayer done to atone for all the past prayers that we miss since we were born. It has the equivalence of 400 years of missed prayers. <laughs> so if anyone's asking me, SubhanAllah if I missed a couple of prayers here, there, I did something in that I didn't complete, is your answer for it? Alhamdulillah's nihma and mercy immense on the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Ali uh, said that that would that could even be rewarded as a thousand years of missed prayers. When asked what was the ex excess years for it since we live for only 60 plus years, Sayyidina Muhammad said that it will be used to atone for the missed prayers of our parents and our ancestors as well as for the people in our town and in our villages, for our community. So the awrad, the wazifa for that. Again don't miss these great rewards that Allah gave to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's from tonight all the way up to your tahajjud before your fajr. If you want to pray it before Salatul Isha no problem, if you want to pray it after your witr no problem, don't miss that. InshaAllah and that awrad is there, how many rakahs? When it says the four rakahs with the and it gives a little bit more complicated, don't make your tashahud. Basically it's telling you pray like four rakahs, not in sets of two. You pray your two rakah before you give your tashahud, go back up and repeat the next two rakahs. And then it gives the what to recite Fatiha and 15 Surat Al-Qadr and 15 Surat Al-Kawthar in each rakah. And then sit after and do the awrad and the, the du'as and the salawats that are written inshaAllah. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us in these holy nights mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to be rewarded not from our actions but Ya Rabbi for our love for Sayyidina Muhammad Grant us a reward to the equivalence of that love Ya Rabbi that has no measure, no way of understanding. Grant us from the love that you have for Sayyidina Muhammad Dress us and bless us and forgive us Ya Rabbi as we're the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad and that we don't want to embarrass our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad on the day of Yawmul Mashar, that we don't want to come with any type of badness that Ya Rabbi grant us an honour so that to show the magnificent honour that you have placed upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that not only the Rasul is so beautiful but look at the beauty of his nation. 
they're adorned with lights and dresses, Ya Rabbi, grant us from that reality inshaAllah Ya Rabbi. Tariqah comes as a school of adab, <coughs> sometimes by the nature of the shaykh is a very, again from hadith of Prophet to lower your wings to people so that they find a familiarity in you and approach. And the tariqah's basis, its barakah and its blessings is adab. So again no offense to anyone but the shaykh will teach how to keep the adab, how to respond, how to be playful, how not to be playful, how to keep the limits so that that barakah can flow. Once the limit is broken the connection is lost. So then the danger of drawing too near to a shaykh is that the limit and the boundary can become confused. Now on the internet there's no difference. Internet is going to be ten times harder because the person is at a distance and it becomes difficult to train. Uh, my concern for our moderators is that they should keep monitoring all the comments and the comments have to be of a religious nature. They have to say, mashallah, thank you, great, I learned, alhamdulillah, that's it. Don't make this familiar and like a hangout because it's not the backyard of shaitan where we're now all playing in shaitan's backyard and making weird faces and, and flowers and romantic gestures or inappropriate comments. Remember there are ulama who are trying to attack us that will be watching these feeds. There are husbands that are watching and wondering why women would be making comments like this. There are women watching wondering why their husbands would be making comments. So I mean this is a, this is a, a, is a very dangerous backyard to be playing in. We're trying our best to do the teaching that's appropriate. So it's just a reminder for ourselves that keep the comments very polite, very religious. Don't make yourself familiar with us as we are not friends with anyone. We are just a teacher here teaching the way towards Sayyidina Muhammad we're nobody's buddy and we're nobody's friend. You may like us because of what we recommend and what, what we're teaching, that's it. Keep that hat and that limit, if that's lost then the whole association becomes like we're playing in shaitan's backyard and Allah protect us from that type of difficulty. Our moderators mm -hmm. don't have to do anything, just take the comment and take it off. And then later on they can message people that please just stick to religious comments and this is nice, alhamdulillah, mashallah, that's it. InshaAllah it's a reminder for myself because things are getting a little bit bizarre and we have family. We have family who are watching, logging on and all of these people have family, wives, children that are watching. And the family looks at these comments and thinks this kind of ajeeb, what are all these things? So please, please <coughs> keep everything real straight. We will say, what do we say in Farsi, sar sangeen? Yeah, keep it, yeah, keep your head heavy. <laughs> it doesn't translate, like kebabs in paradise. Huh? I don't like that too much. We're talking about the table sent from heaven. If you ever think, when we ever think, you know, that we're going into heaven with bodies of light. And when they're asking, Ya Rabbi, that send us a table from heaven. People think like a hot kebabs are coming down but that table from heaven comes from the world of light. So every kebab there is from the kebabs of light and the angels will be astonished to see how you're going to eat that. <laughs> so alhamdulillah Allah just you, bless you and forgive me inshaAllah and anytime we do something wrong this is a side note on the ways of marifa and the ways of istighfar that when we do something wrong in life not only we ask Allah's forgiveness, if we have wronged someone, a person then make an amends, make an amends in our life to ask that person's forgiveness. If you harm them with your talk and with your actions and you've hurt their heart or broke their heart this is something that very dear to Allah that we try to make a life not going around you know breaking people's hearts. 
So if we're doing something wrong, the key to its success is make an amends and apologize to a person that you've harmed with your actions and with your tongue. One reality behind that is that it's very hard on your ego. Your ego hates it so much that if you live by that standard your ego will teach you, don't bother this person because again we're going to have to go say, I'm sorry and I hate that more than the action that you did. But if you don't and think, I can harm people and just say, oh, you're up here, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. But it wasn't Allah's issue. The issue was with the person that we harmed or we came across or we took their rights from them. So that person has to give a forgiveness in their heart and that act of trying to do that is heavy on the nafs until the nafs begin to warn you just, okay, better we don't do these things so we don't have to keep saying sorry to everybody and that becomes its own defense mechanism towards keeping good character inshaAllah. Click the link now to subscribe. <laughs>